All right now, feeling better? Got myself a shower, nice and cleaned up. Probably more information than you needed. But anyhow, I'm going to continue on the Enneagram of Personality and an explanation of what it's about, what it means, how it works, and I'm going to try to convey that information the best that I can. In the first video that I did, the introduction to the Enneagram, I jumped right into the Yasha Wa aspect of it, as I see that is the most important aspect of the Enneagram because of how it has been used and what it represents. And it has been used for religious indoctrination for thousands of years, and I felt that was most important to start there. But now what I'm going to do is start right at the beginning of the chart. Anybody that has already printed up a chart may want to be looking at their chart right now. If not, I'll provide a link below where people can go to the Wikipedia page of Enneagram of Personality and can follow along. Okay, I have my chart here. Oh, might as well take down this other thing. Alrighty now. Might as well start right in the beginning on the chart. Left hand side, top corner, there's written type. And the types are listed in numbers. And the numbers have more meaning than just to itemize which line you're on or which characteristic role. There really would be no reason to put a number in there other than the fact that it, it does have a real reference. It's not just characteristic role number one, number two, number three. There's more meaning to it with the numbers. And the meanings are found in the ancient Egyptian ways of looking at numbers. Now some really good information to learn about this concept of the ancient Egyptian way of looking at numbers can be found in a book titled Serpent in the Sky. And I'll provide a link in the in the about box below this video for that book also. The book was written by a man, Anthony West, and it is an excellent batch of information, much more than just what the number of relevance means. But I'll share some of that with you. For example, number one. The number one in ancient Egypt referred to unity, which equaled all, all and everything. If we look Across on our chart, we'll see the holy idea is perfection. And yes, that's meaning we get from the, the number one also. And the reason I'm, I'm doing this again is to show that there's relevance here to these numbers that are being used. But we'll go on to number two. Number two. Number two in ancient Egyptian knowledge. I have to think for a moment because I'm not an ancient Egyptian. I really don't have it off the top of my mind as good as I should. But as time goes on, it will sink into my memory. It will be more available right off the top of my head and the same should be for you also. Which, again, I'm really going to rec recommend getting a copy of Serpent in the Sky. But if you cannot get a copy of Serpent in the Sky, maybe you can find information online. I found a, a free PDF copy online, and that's where I got my information from. I really don't know if it was authorized by the author or not. I just seen it, and I got it, and I read it, and I want to get the book because I read it. And I know the information on there is important. One thing I don't know if other people have discovered, but... The internet is a good thing and it's a bad thing. It brings forth information, but it also takes away information. I'm finding a lot of important information is disappearing. It's disappearing offline, or it's becoming very hard to find because the search engines such as Google are omitting it where we can't get the information. It's kind of like becoming the nation of China, where China 
wants to limit the amount of information available to the people and we all realize the reason why a government would limit the information to a people is because it does not benefit the government it would only benefit the people so let me go on number two characteristic role which is the helper number two in ancient Egypt is known as duality as a person would understand two duality two things and that equals polarization polarization is like a magnet a magnet has a north pole and a south pole so there's a duality going on there and the dualities can either oppose or attract they're obviously attracted to one another because they're within the one realm of being a magnet and in order for that to occur there has to have number three which is called well let me write down number three now in ancient Egypt it starts out at one one becomes two which automatically becomes three and it has to automatically become two either that or it will revert to two separate ones now two separate ones are the way we have always been taught about numbers and the reason we have always been taught that way is because by looking at numbers and particularly using the number one to start with is we're talking about two units of measure we're talking about accounting and accounting is very important especially to do with goods and services and money and sales and profit and that was the most important aspects that got retained by the people that do know about this. They know about this, but they don't want you to know about this. All they want you to know is one plus one equals two. And one might not be enough for what you're doing, so you need two. Or you might need three, or you might need four, or you might need five. And that's just an accounting principle of numbers. But let me get back to to what their understanding is you know the people who are the illuminated people the people that people call the Illuminati because they say that there's a group of illuminated people I'm not so sure those people are even illuminated at this point in time to tell you the truth I'm not convinced that they are I don't think they they may even know what it is that I'm sharing with you people right now not to its full extent they know the signs, they know the symbols, they know how to use them, they know how to manipulate you with them, they know how to manipulate me with them, they know how to manipulate nations with them, but I'm not so sure they really even know what they are themselves, to tell you the truth. I know the lower le levels of the so-called Illuminati and the Masons, they don't know. They're totally clueless. And I know the religious people that get online and they make YouTube videos and they talk about the Illuminati and the Masonic symbols and all this kind of stuff and they're taking over the world and, and, and all these kinds of things. Well, yes, they are taking over the world because we're talking about military, not morality. You and me have to deal with morality, not the military aspect. And there's a very good reason for it going to be a change. It's going to be a change from the top. If, if, if you want to think that that's a prophecy, go right ahead. I'm telling you, it's just obvious. The way that things are going, it's obvious. There's going to be a change in the military. The military industrial complex is going to change. That's the money machine around the world, and it's going to change. It's either going to change for the good, or it's going to change for the worse. And that is up to you and your morality. Because you may very well be part of that mechanism of the military industrial complex. Just by doing your job every day, you may be part of it. You might not even know you're part of it, but you may be part of it. Because the military industrial complex encompasses so much, especially so much in, in, in America. 
And that's the new economy that's up and coming. That's a new economy that's all set. President Obama sealed the deal. He made sure that our country is set to be military industrial complex specific. Excuse me. But it doesn't have to be that way. There's plenty of weapons that have already been created. Man knows how to destroy man. Nations know how to destroy nations. We don't need more destruction. We need creation. We need building. And the same laws that are in place that can be used for military dictatorship to make this a hell on earth can also be used to make a new kingdom to make this heaven on earth. But, you know, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I get off track because when these things come to mind, I have to, I have to let them out so that I don't lose them. So that they build on one another. So as I say, or I'm about to say, the number three is the number of reconciliation. That's when you have two things. They're two opposing forces, but they're put together. And they're held together by reconciliation. So that's the process known as reconcile. What does that equal? This is reconciliation equal. Could, e <laughs> could be, could be good. It could be bad. But it holds everything together. The reconciliation we have seen traditionally is a reconciliation that is not really even a reconciliation, because it creates that accounting method of two unities, which isn't a real unity at all. It's not. It's not a real unity at all. And it's not really uh, duality to the respect that it is it being held together because it's still creating two things that are separate. So even though the duality, the polarization's going on, they're not together. Now you can see that in some aspects around the world that they are together. If you look at the current nation of Israel with the Palestinians that are amongst the population of Israelis. There's a duality going on there. There's a polarization going on there. The government is the reconciliation factor, but the end result of that polarization and that duality is two different types of citizens. You have a first class citizen, which is the Israelis, and a second class citizen, which are the Palestinians. This is an ancient concept that has been since the beginning time of Israel the current people who are in the nation of Israel occupying and governing the nation Israel liked this concept very much. Those people come from a nation known as Khazaria and are the Khazarians, which is also the true Aryan nation. So you can start getting in your mind as to a knowledge of what has happened and what's truly going on. That nation was a secular nation. And that nation allowed people to have their own religions. So to keep them happy. To keep them complacent. The government didn't care. They really didn't care about their religions as long as they weren't going against the government. Now the Khazarian nations must have said to themselves, the leaders I'm talking about, must have said to themselves, you know something, this is a great religion, this Judaism. Because it creates two classes of system. Us and them. But look at the horrible things that happened. Because back then, the nation of Israel, there were what people would call the Jews, which were basically Israelis. There was the Israelis, and then there were the Gentiles, which what they looked at them as second-class citizens. They looked at them as worse than second-class citizens. They looked at them as animals. They looked at them as animals. And that is the very first thing in war that a soldier must learn is to look at their enemy as something different other than just a soldier working on behalf of a government. And they have to do that to reconcile their mind that they're going to kill that person. And they have to do that. They have to convince themselves of it or they may be the one to be killed. They have to. They have no choice other, other than to do that. But the people at the top that are creating these wars should be doing the proper types of reconciliation. The proper types. But that's a subject for another day. 
We're just into basic reconciliation. And basic reconciliation can be good or it can be bad. We have witnessed for thousands of years, not that I've been around for thousands of years, but we have the history, the written history, that the reconciliation using war is no good. It's no good. Because all that means is one group takes over another group. And even if it's the, even if it's the United States going in and taking over the land of Iraq, and people say, well, it's going to be good because they're going to become more like us. Are they? Are we in good shape in this country? I'm not so sure we are. We're, we're on a downfall. We're on a real bad downfall. And we're, we're in the direction where we are going to have two types of... I shouldn't say we're going to. We already know that we have two types of citizens in this country. Some people think it's a racial divide, which in some respect it is. But again, that goes back to the nation of Israel and what they did. They made a racial divide. But they even enslaved their own people. And the remnants of that slavery is still in the hearts and the souls and the minds of the people who's in the bloodlines, whether they know it or not. It affects them. But anyhow, again, I, 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 I'm getting off course and I apologize. This video's taken a long time just to talk about a few numbers. But sometimes these important things have to be said. Hopefully they'll be understood. But number three can either be war or peace. Which is it that we want? Do we want to reconcile with war or reconcile with peace? both. Now I'm really digressing. Now I'm really, you know something? I'm just going to end this video. did the best I could with this.